We are joined now, though, by Israeli military spokesperson Doran Spielman. Uh, Doran, very good to have you on Bloomberg Radio with us this morning. Can you please, first of all, update us on the latest situation on the ground? Are there still areas that you're trying to secure at this stage? So yes, good morning, and uh, may it be a good morning for the residents of the state of Israel who are uh, still in shock and recovering from what is the most uh, difficult uh, time perhaps in our history, the largest massacre of Israeli civilians, men, women, and children, uh, really in the history. And and every time, unfortunately, uh, the radio announcements go out or the TV announcements goes out, those numbers just continue to climb. Uh, Today in Israel, uh, we are still actively fighting uh, terrorist infiltrations in seven different communities along the border of Israel. And we have to understand that these are communities of uh, men, women, and children. Just think of neighborhoods, normal neighborhoods of families with homes and parks in the middle. Uh, and there are still terrorists that are inside homes, inside parks, there are hostage situations. And it's uh, incredibly difficult to uh, remove those terrorists, to neutralize those terrorists because they've embedded themselves inside communities, inside schools, uh, medical clinics. So and there so are ongoing, ongoing hostage situations in Southern Israel at the moment? Yes, uh, particularly uh, in uh, one community. And um, what we've seen over the last 24 hours is additional terror cells that have crossed over and are in hiding have come up and have uh, reappeared. And so there's an, it's an ongoing search. For example, not that long ago, a terror cell appeared, took over an ambulance, drove that ambulance towards central Israel, and thank God they were neutralized before they could reach the southern town of Ashdod, which is very close to Tel Aviv. How so large at the moment is your deployment in that region? So we've now deployed four divisions uh, in that region, including special forces. Yeah, we're also, those divisions are spread out along the entire border, patrolling the security fence, uh, which has, as we know, had numerous breaches in them. The, around 90% of them have been uh, reclosed. Around 10% uh, of them are still open. You have, as crazy as this may sound, hundreds of terrorists leaving Gaza in streams, still trying to enter Israel. Uh, we've neutralized uh, more than 100 of them uh, from the air. Uh, you have uh, ongoing rocket salvos constantly. Um, I was up much, much of the night. Uh, anybody here was up, up much of the night with rocket salvos. So while we're getting a handle on the situation, it's very much an active situation. Okay, and I appreciate that and, and you bringing us up to date on the information as you have it at the moment. What efforts are, are being made or what have you established about the hostages that have been taken into Gaza? So as we know, uh, based on both our own videos, our own intelligence, and actually the uh, cynical videos, the horrible videos put out by the terrorists, a number of those hostages at this point have been identified. Uh, we, we have solid intelligence on uh, who those people are. We've established a general and a command center now to deal with those hostages um, and a separate track, you know, negotiations and dealing with those hostages. They are also dealing with uh, the missing, dealing with the families of the missing. And so that is not up and running. It's a constant and very painful process. Families are standing in lines, holding items of their children with their children's DNA. How, how many people do you know are being held in Gaza? We're still saying dozens at this point. And part of that is uh, for operational reasons. And part of that is also mm -hmm. uh, because we are going through a process while many of them uh, we believe to be alive, a number of them also, uh, unfortunately, are probably dead, and there's an ongoing situation, but it is many dozens of hostages. And if we want to understand who these hostages are, you can, you know, we, we've seen the, the videos of not only men and women, there's a video of an Israeli child, maybe five years old, he doesn't understand where he is. He's being pushed around by large Gazan children in the street, one of them's holding a whip in his hands, and it, it's just incredibly are, difficult to see these are images. You, are you at this stage still evacuating people from southern Israel? Uh, how many people are being moved? Yes, so we are now uh, at the final stages of the, evacu the evacuation. We hope to finish it today. We had uh, honestly hoped to finish it yesterday. It's an ongoing process. A number of them have been airlifted out. Uh, some of them have been lifted out on ground. Again, what has 
cause such a delay in this is the constant fighting in the area. So we don't want to obviously move people and put them in the way of fire. But we hope by the end of today, this should be completed. What went wrong in the preparations for this that the attack was able to happen and and, and so many people were, were killed and wounded? Uh, first of all, this was a, uh, a horrific uh, error. There's no question. And uh, the Israeli army prides itself on being incredibly self-transparent and self-reflective. Had this even been one person that had been killed, the army would be going through a process right now of trying to understand how this happened. Having hundreds and hundreds of people been killed and many taken hostages, this is going to be a process that's going to take weeks and months. We've set up teams to already uh, start to consider this, but we have to understand that is going to probably be in a few weeks or in a few months. Right now, what we're focused on with all of our might is securing the citizens of southern Israel, freeing those hostages, and destroying Hamas. Are you preparing for a ground invasion of Gaza? Right now, the IDF is preparing for all, uh, everything is on the table. All scenarios are on the table. We're prepared for anything. Uh, right now, we're actively hitting those Hamas targets in uh, two specific areas where they're launching most of their attacks inside the Gaza Strip. We've hit more than a thousand different targets. Uh, we've been hitting terrorists from the air, tunnels, uh, multi-story command centers, weapons depots, and um, you know, and also trying to neutralize the terrorists that are inside of Israel. Uh, ground well, forces in, is an option, uh, but it hasn't been deployed yet. In the actions that you've taken so far in Gaza, what efforts are you making to avoid harming civilians? Well, I'll tell you, this is very, very difficult. The IDF uh, is probably the most careful army in the entire world. We've in, in fact, develop the, the techniques of warning civilians. We sent out SMSs, we've dropped flyers, and many of that we've done in this case. We created the whole method of what's called the knock on the door, which is where uh, you send warning shots uh, towards people and try to get them out of the buildings. Unfortunately, in this case, the, uh, the threat is so great and we have declared war and Hamas has cynically embedded themselves once again in the civilian population that unfortunately uh, there may be civilians that are harmed and uh, it's a tragedy. The Hamas doesn't care about Israeli civilians. They, they didn't do a knock on the door when they threw the grenades inside the ambulances carrying the, the sick and wounded. And our first goal is the operational success of this mission. And uh, we are also concerned with the Gazan, the Gazan people. I wish Hamas was concerned with the Gazan people. Um, I, I, we're, I'm, we're really looking at comments from the permanent observer uh, from the Palestinian territories of the United Nations, Riyad Mansour, who has said that uh, Israel cannot wage a full-scale war on a nation, its people, its land, on holy sites and expect peace in exchange. Has Israel done enough to promote peace in Gaza? I think that if we're looking at peace and we are two days after an event, where killers thirsty for blood, thousands perhaps crossed over from Gaza into Israeli territory, killed innocent civilians. And we are hearing Palestinian voices blaming us that we're not interested in peace and not hearing them condemning this heinous act. I think this really shows who is interested in peace in this region and who is used to a bloody barbaric type of posture. We're looking at reports from the Wall Street Journal this morning that Iranian officials helped to plan Hamas's surprise attacks on Israel. Do you know anything about that? Can you tell us more? I can tell you uh, that without commenting specifically, I believe you can connect the dots. We, we have seen already from June 20th, the heads of Hamas, the heads of the head of Islamic Jihad, and from Hanas Ismail Haniya, who's responsible for the whole organization, met directly with uh, Raisi, the president of Iran. They specifically discussed the Gazan situation, and that was only three months ago. I'm sure they were discussing, you know, uh, how the fishing is going over the summer in Iran. They were clearly discussing uh, the Gazan situation. And we know Iran funds Hamas. They've been very public about this. 